My name is Neil Stolzmark, and I've been practicing Okinawan Karate and Okinawan Kobudo for 36 years. I wanted to learn everything there was about this art, and so I went, had to go to, you know, straight to the, the source, the highest authority. That has been my lifelong pursuit, is to find the, the true meaning, the true way of Okinawa Kobodo. As a youth, I did uh, judo and things like that, uh, but never lasted. And, and it was just uh, six weeks of YMCA things, and I boxed. and. I uh, did some other wrestlings, things like that, as uh, you know, probably before, before the age of 10. The Kobodo was not well known. Uh, everyone knew what a pair of nunchuk was, um, were because of the Bruce Lee movies. So we'd make our own as kids. Everybody did that. We'd cut off broomsticks and screw eyelets into them and put a piece of string and voila, we were Bruce Lee. I also met a friend while I was playing football that was not picked on by the team bully. And I said, why isn't he picked on? He's smaller than me. And they said, oh, he knows karate. So I started, he became my best friend. And uh, so I started with him originally. And then when I uh, got serious, I, at 17 years old, I went down to the school in town. The place was called the Yamashita Karate Studio. And it offered instruction in Okinawan martial arts. I trained about five years with Dan Schrader, uh, and then I became a student of Tadashi Yamashita. I had known him since my start, but he was my teacher's teacher. He's very famous for uh, weapons training, Kobodo training. If he was in the Midwest anywhere, I would travel five, six, seven, eight hours by car and uh, hit him every time I went. And then uh, it really culminated in about 1984. I think 84, 85, we shot a documentary on his life, and then uh, we became pretty close, and he took me to Australia with him, and Japan, and Okinawa, and so I traveled extensively with him for about 15 years as his demonstration partner, and we did many, many seminars across the world, teaching people, introducing them, really, to Kobodo was fantastic for a young guy like me. I was young and early 20s and uh, to see different parts of the world, to, to go to Okinawa, where the birthplace of karate and kobudo, uh, was phenomenal. It was probably the most amazing experience one could expect for a first visit anywhere in that they had a festival called the Uchinan Chu Taikai. Uchinan is Okinawa Chu's people. So the Uchinan Chu people, the people, Okinawan People's Festival, they had uh, built this beautiful facility on the ocean, a uh, big convention hall. And their idea was to get all of the karate masters that had left Okinawa and went on to different parts of the world to spread the art of karate and kobudo to come back for this one giant gathering. And they had did a three-day demonstration. So every living master was at this event. So I got to meet the people that I said, you know, I read their, their books. I read the books that were written about them. I took pictures with them. I shook hands with them. I ate with them. Uh, and I trained with them. Um, but the Kobodo side of it, um, because he trained separate Kobodo, and that's the Kobodo he taught me. He got me started on. And so I met the founder of that Kobodo Association style, if you will, uh, by the name of Matayoshi Sensei, Shimpo Matayoshi. And he had uh, a number of really fantastic students, and one in particular stood out, and his name was Gakia, uh, Sensei Yoshiaki Gakia. My first impression of him was this. We trained a two-hour session, and maybe it was longer than that. I was young and uh, time flew, but it was light when we started and dark when we finished. 
And at the end of this grueling session, everybody went outside and, and had refreshments and yeah, cooled off. And the, it was August in Okinawa, so it was hot. And one guy stayed in there and practiced. And I kept hearing these noises. and I, So I walked back and peeked it back in the dojo. And here he was practicing basics by himself after this two, three hour session of, of training. And the next night, same thing happened. 10, 12 years later, I had made the decision to um, not train any longer with Sensei Yamashita. And I wanted to go back to the old ways and uh, Gakia Sensei, I had been training with him on visits to Okinawa, uh, along with his teacher, Matayoshi Sensei. When he passed in 97, Gakia Sensei was named the successor, Kancho, as they say in Japanese. And so I spent as much time as I could with him. He came to the United States a few times. I went to Okinawa at least yearly, sometimes three times a year. And he was very gracious and just a fantastic practitioner. In 2001, uh, approximately five years after he had taken over, he decided he was going to run his own association. And he left the uh, Matayoshi family's uh, dojo and started his own uh, association. And I, had, at that point, became his first official student in what we now have the Okinawa Kobro Doshi Rensei Kai, which in English simply stated means friends who train Kobro together. Gakia Sensei ran the OKDR, Okinawa Kobro Doshi Rensei Kai Association, for almost 10 years. And then sadly he had a stroke and was unable to continue um, training. He's paralyzed on the left side. At that point in time, he didn't know what he was going to do with the association, and he asked me if I would be willing to take over, which was quite extraordinary in that I had figured that there would be several Okinawan uh, senior practitioners, masters if you will, would take over. And he said he could not find an Okinawan that would fit the bill. And if I wasn't do it, he was going to shut it down. So I was excited. It was a sad way to uh, move up, but I've never regretted it. I uh, probably made people angry because I uh, I left instructors that I surpassed in my quest for knowledge. Not, not necessarily physically, not necessarily intellectually. It's just that I wanted to learn everything there was about this art. And so I went, had to go to, straight to the, the source, the highest authority. And that's who I trained with. And when the highest authority passed away in 1997, Matayoshi Sensei, I trained with his top student was my very, very close friend to this day. Love him like a father, brother. And um, sad that he you know, had the physical uh, limitations of having a stroke, and, but he trusted me with, with the art that he loved so much, and it's my turn. And one of our goals is to preserve the techniques as they were taught over the last couple centuries. All the tools used are derived from fishing and farming implements that the Okinawan people used because they didn't have any other kind of conventional way to defend themselves well, with, a, you know, with a weapon. So they improvised and implemented these farming and fishing tools into ways of defending themselves. Kobodo is passed on uh, through kata. Kata is an exercise much like a gymnastic routine, a dance routine, things like that, where it's a collection of techniques that are performed and, and you very specific, very exact, and you continue to, to work on that. And that is your art form. Kata is 
the soul of the martial arts, kata and kobudo. Within the kata, of course, there are many, many moves. And so these moves, we break off and we practice them individually. And some of them we call yobiundo, which basically means uh, exercise. We work those specifically um, to improve that particular technique. And then we have hojondo, which is supplementary exercises that are organized, that they're moves from the kata. So it'd be like, uh, for example, a football team would practice an out route and they would practice it over and over again. And they would practice how to catch the ball. How to catch the ball would be like yobiundo. An out route would be like a hojo It would be an actual move from the kata. So the uh, Okinawa Komodo Doshi Rensekai, we offer many of these supplementary and um, practice exercises to improve our technique, which improves the kata. The true Komodo in the Okinawa Komodo Doshi Rensekai is the application of the hojo undo, the yobi undo, and the kata. So every time you do a move, you understand what you're doing with that move. Most of the people that practice kobudo don't get an opportunity to do that. So what kind of sets us apart is the two-man, three-man, five-man drills that we do uh, where you understand exactly what you're doing with that kobudo tool and how it's applied in reality. So the reality-based applications is what makes us a little bit different than some of the other uh, systems out there. history of the kata is is shrouded in mystery because most of it was done verbally uh, generation to generation passed on through you know actual physical contact not recorded in books people may have written down uh, certain things much of that is suspected to have been lost in World War II most of the kata if not all of the kata probably are named after either people that taught uh, art form and their students named it after them, or the names of the kata are places. Sakagawa is a very prominent figure in Okinawan karate and kobudo history, and he passed on the techniques that he learned. And one of the most famous and most practiced kata in kobudo in general 
is Sakagawa no Kun. The project was originally supposed to be with my sensei, Gakia, Yoshiaki sensei. The two of us were supposed to do this together and he had hesitations and reservations because he said, Nyo-san, if we do this, there's going to be people we don't know practicing our kobudo. And I said, sensei, there is people practicing our kobudo, they're just doing it wrong. And he said, you're right, let's do it. And we had it set up and you know, unfortunately, as I stated earlier, he, he had a stroke and was unable to practice anymore, but he encouraged me to go on with this project. <laughs> 